Hi, welcome to another video. So, keeping up with AI coding tools right now feels a little bit like trying to drink from a fire hose. So, today, I want to catch you up on the rapid fire updates to Claude Code, specifically looking at the changes from version 2.0.70 up to the latest 2.0.74. There is some serious stuff here that changes how the agent understands your code. Anyway, I'm thinking of making this a recurring thing, a patch notes breakdown for Claude Code. If you like this format, let me know. But let's get into the updates because there is one feature in particular that dropped in version 2.0.74 that is actually a game changer. So, let's talk about the big one first. In version 2.0.74, they added an LSP tool. That stands for Language Server Protocol. Now, if you aren't deep into compiler theory or IDE architecture, you might gloss over this, but you shouldn't. This is massive. Here is the context. Up until now, most AI agents, including previous versions of Claude Code, interacted with your code base kind of like a developer using a text editor without plugins. If the AI wanted to know what a function did, it had to read the file. If it needed to know where that function was called, it basically had to grep or search for the string text across your files. It was doing string matching. But with LSP integration, Claude Code now has code intelligence. It basically allows you to have the agent perform go to definition, find references, and hover for documentation, exactly like your VS Code setup does. Open Code already had this before, and Claude Code has now caught up as well. There has been some discussion about why this took so long for AI agents to adopt, and it is a valid point. We have been feeding LLMs raw text for years expecting them to understand the structural logic of a program just by looking at the characters. But a compiler or a language server understands the code as a tree, an abstract syntax tree. By giving Claude access to the LSP, we are stopping it from hallucinating where a file is or guessing what a function signature looks like. It can now query the language server to get the exact truth. This means fewer errors when you ask it to refactor a component that is used in 50 different places. It doesn't have to search text. It asks the server, where is this symbol used? And gets a perfect list. This is kind of awesome. It essentially bridges the gap between an AI that reads text and an AI that understands code structure. If you have been finding that the agent loses context in large repos, this update targets that directly. But it doesn't just stop there. Version 2.0.74 also brought some love for the terminal power users. I know a lot of you are very particular about your terminal emulators. I am too. Previously, setting up the key bindings and integration for Claude Code could be a bit fiddly depending on what you were running. They have added a terminal setup command that now natively supports Kitty, Alacrity, Zed, and Warp. This is a quality of life thing, but it matters. If you are using Warp, for instance, which is very popular right now, you can just run that command, and it configures the environment so your shortcuts and history navigation work properly. It just works out of the box. They also fixed some keyboard shortcuts for macOS users, specifically where the Option key wasn't behaving like the Alt key for things like word deletion. If you were getting annoyed by your cursor jumping around weirdly, that's fixed now. Now, let me show it to you in action. Well, not a full demo, but I want to describe a workflow change that came in version 2.0.72. They added Claude in Chrome beta support. This basically allows you to control a Chrome instance directly from the CLI. 
This connects with the Claude Chrome extension. Why do you care? Because previously, you would write code, the server would start, and then you would have to copy-paste the error from the browser back into the terminal. With this update, you can tell Claude to open the app in Chrome, inspect the page, and it can actually see the console logs and the DOM state. It closes the loop. You aren't the copy-paste middleware anymore. You can just say, the button on the home page isn't centering, go check it, and it can leverage that browser connection. It is still in beta, but the direction is clear. The agent lives in your terminal, but it has hands in your browser. Going back a bit further to version 2.0.71, they added a slash config toggle for prompt suggestions. If you have used these tools, you know that sometimes the AI tries to be too helpful. You start typing, and it suggests a completion. Sometimes that's great. Sometimes it gets in the way of your train of thought. Now you can toggle that on or off. It's a small detail, but when you live in a tool for eight hours a day, these friction points matter. And speaking of friction, I have to mention a security and usability update from version 2.0.70 regarding MCP, the Model Context Protocol. If you are using MCP servers, which you should be, that's how you connect Claude to databases or GitHub, you had to approve tools. If a server had 20 tools, you might have found yourself clicking Allow over and over again. It was fatigue-inducing. They added wildcard syntax. You can now approve MCP double underscore server double underscore asterisk. This means you can say, I trust this server. Let it run whatever tool it needs. For local development, this is huge. You don't want to be the bottleneck approving every single read file or execute query command. You just set the wildcard and Claude flows through the tasks. Here is where it gets interesting regarding visualization. In 2.0.74, they improved the slash context command. One of the hardest things about working with LLMs is managing the context window. You have 200,000 tokens, maybe more, maybe less. But what is filling it up? Is it that massive log file you accidentally added? Is it the history? The new visualization group skills and agents by source and sorts them by token count. You can run slash context and immediately see, oh, 40% of my context is wasted on this one documentation file I don't need anymore. You can clean it up. It makes the invisible cost of AI development visible. Also, for those of you running massive sessions, version 2 0.70 improved memory usage by three times for large conversations. If you have ever had your terminal lag or the process crash after a three-hour coding session, this update is for you. It's much more efficient at garbage collecting the history that it doesn't need to keep an active memory. They also threw in some nice UI polish. There is a Control plus T shortcut in the slash theme command to toggle syntax highlighting. If you are on a weird terminal color scheme and the syntax highlighting is making the text unreadable, which happens more often than you'd think, you can just kill it instantly. And one final thing from version 2.0.73 that I personally love, clickable image links. If the AI generates or references an image, it's now a clickable link in the terminal that opens in your default viewer. Before, you had to go hunt for the file in your finder. In literal seconds, you can verify if the asset it created is actually good. They realize that for an agent to be truly autonomous, it needs the same rigorous tools that human developers use. It can't just guess. It needs to know. The support for specific terminals, Kitty, Warp, Zed, shows they are meeting developers where they live. 
rather than forcing them to use a specific environment. And the performance improvements on memory suggest that people are using this for real, heavy work, not just hello world scripts. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.